I did a degree in Arabic, um, which meant that I went to live in Syria to, to study it. Um, I then did a master's in international relations, which I went into to kind of more detail on what's going on in Syria. And it was right at the beginning of the Syrian civil war. And I happened already to be, have chosen to do a thesis on Syrian politics, which meant that I convinced my lecturer at the time to let me go to Syria and collect some kind of data on the early stages of the revolution as it was then. I let the Telegraph know that I was there and I ended up writing undercover for the Telegraph for the first sort of six months of the war inside Syria um, until it got a bit too dangerous by December 2011. Then the BBC found out what I was doing and offered me a job in February because at that time no one knew anything about Syria. My story is one of where I just loved a topic and uh, I suppose it was right place, right time. In Paris, during the Paris attacks, uh, or in Nice, you know, when you're told we need to speak to some of the survivors, people who've lost their, members of their family or their friends, um, that, for me, I still find really hard. And there's obviously a line because you want to respect people, but you also want to make a powerful piece of news or piece of television. The thing I often say to people when I get asked is that they need to be kind of all man bands when it comes to being able to work as a journalist. It depends what kind of journalism they want to get into, but certainly in broadcast, um, if you can do everything, then just for economic reasons that people are going to like you. So if you can say, if you pitch a story and you say, I'm going to shoot it, I'll produce it, I'll report on it, and I'll, I'll, I'll edit it. That's four people that they've saved money on doing it, it's just you doing it. So that's obviously the main thing that I think people need to know. I get messages from people saying, oh, I speak these five different languages and you know you speak languages that, that must have helped you it absolutely did help me and Arabic particularly does help so aside from the technical stuff learn Arabic learn Russian learn Mandarin learn useful languages because um, they they do help but the technical stuff I think is key it's, it's funny because at the BBC everyone's goes the, the key word is digital everyone goes oh it has to be digital because you reach so many more people in a different way you know, when I was in Beirut reporting on what was going on in Aleppo, I would do TV lives, and then I'd have maybe 20 minutes in the afternoon where I'd do a Facebook live. And if you think about the number of people you can reach, those Facebook lives are reaching about 500,000 people, which is many more than watch the BBC rolling news at any one time. And um, the reaction I get, certainly, is from younger people is that they're, they do engage with those sorts of mediums. But I think also the other thing to remember is the way you speak. I don't think it matters necessarily on what platform, but for younger people, they want to hear you speak almost like I'm speaking to you now. I think they appreciate things being more casual. So when things are on Facebook, it's not that it's just because it's on Facebook, it's because it's, the tone is different. And I think people appreciate that, particularly when you're talking about something as complicated as Syria. You need, you need to just take it down a notch and just talk to people like they're sitting in front of you rather than in a news way. But there is something wonderful about doing stories where you know nothing and you learn about it. It's one of the reasons why I like my job. I just did a story on leaseholds and freeholds. I mean, on the face of it, that looked boring as hell, but actually, I really enjoyed it. So actually, it, it actually probably helps the audience if you are new to it, because you approach it in the way they would, rather than starting from a point, your point of departure is all the way up here. If I'm talking to them about Syria, maybe I forget that they don't know as much maybe as I do about Syria, because I've been following it for so much longer. Maybe that's more helpful that I don't know anything about a subject. But when it comes to Syria and particularly mental health, for me, making that film on my family was amazing because I just kept thinking to myself, I'm being paid to find out about something I'm interested in, find out my, my family, find out something I'm passionate about, and do something I hope which will make a uh, difference. And what a brilliant job to do something that you care about on an issue you're passionate about and you think might help. Um, so yeah, I think, I think if you look at the stuff that people have seen of mine, which they more they like more, it's always the stuff that I love doing, and it's just natural. I've got to work on the stuff I'm not so interested in to make it better TV.